a little bit about me because it's not as important, but it's cool to know, right? <laughs> so my name is Amira Amin, like I've already introduced myself. I am a psychology professor, um, and I've been studying the brain for about 10 years. So I'm kind of like a brain junkie. I will be diving into parts of the brain today, so pay attention because there, there will be pop quizzes. And um, I recently discovered the power of essential oils. Um, and if you're anything like me, when you first hear about it, you're like, this sounds like voodoo magic. <laughs> but um, having the advantage of being a researcher like I am, going into the scientific literature and researching it for myself, and then using it on myself and on my family anecdotally, I've um, come to find that there are actually a lot of benefits and uh, uses for essential oils. So today I'm going to go over some of these uses, but more specifically I'm going to show you how and why they work, because I think uh, you're more empowered when you know exactly how the mechanism works in your mind and your body. But first I want to ask you guys what brings you specifically today? Like, why are you interested in learning about essential oils? And I think there's no wrong answer. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Mira's like, no, you, no, you. You say something. Actually, say something. Sure. This is the first day we're here. Yeah. We wanted to invite him. Yeah. Come in and pick up budget and see the thing. Okay, so you're like, I need to and see what they told us about. Okay, so you're curious. You wanna you wanna learn more? Absolutely. Anybody else just here because you're curious, or maybe already use oils and want to expand their knowledge? Yeah. I already use it. Um, yeah. So I guess I mean it's a lot of information. So I read mean, bought a book. Yeah. And I'm overwhelmed by it. Yes, it so can be. Just, yeah. It can definitely be overwhelming because there is a world of knowledge. Um, and I will say that this is just one topic of many. Right? I'm going to give like a very specific overview at some points. I'll try to show more of the broad uses to you, um, but there are so many different categories that you can use essential oils for, and we actually host different types of classes here for that purpose. So we host one on skin. I think next week there will be one on supporting weight loss, um, on how to use it for cleaning supplies. So there's, there's actually a ton of benefits and uses, right? But I'm interested in anybody who feels like this sometimes. Anyone go throughout your day and you're just like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm tired. Right? Maybe around 2 p.m. is usually usually when it starts to go downhill. Right? So hopefully by the end of today you'll understand why this happens to a lot of us and how we can use the essential oils to support our body to do what it knows how to do naturally. What if I told you that these are just some of the health benefits um, associated with essential oils? You can get a more restful sleep. You can support your immune system. You can support your mood. Any aches and pains, right? Um, irritations on your skin, digestive issues. I know last night I ate something kind of funky and I was like, oh, but I was glad I had an oil. I'll talk about that. I had an oil in my little oil tool kit that helped me get over that. So if I, you know, if you're reading all this list, are you like, this seems, again, like that voodoo magic a little too good to be true, right? You're like, all this from an oil? Well, like I said, I'll, I'll talk to you about it, but first, what is an essential oil? Where does it come from, right? So essential oils come from nature, come from plants. Right? So they come from flowers, they come from seeds, roots, trees, herbs, grasses, right? So it's all the natural nature all around us. And then what you do from there is you, um, you harvest the plant and you separate the oil from the plant itself. I'll talk more about that in a second, but I want to mention that this is not a new story, okay? These remedies, these natural remedies from the earth, from plants, they've been around for, for generations. Like ancient times, people knew about um, these natural remedies, right? Just to give you an example, as I, as I was growing up, if I had an upset stomach when I was a baby, my mom would give me NST or water. 
as I got older, she taught me about ginger tea, peppermint tea, right? We, we know about like our moms tell us and then their moms and their, that came from an ancient knowledge. If you're feeling under the weather, we know or in eating oranges or foods rich in vitamin C is good for us. Cinnamon, clove, lemon, other um, plants and fruits that are good to support our immune system. Well, these are all found in essential oils, okay? Anise, ginger, peppermint are just some of the ones found in Digest Zen. Okay, so this is the one I personally reached out to last night when I had kind of like a yucky feeling in my tummy. I took some Digest Zen because it has those herbs in there that we already know about, right? On Guard is what we use when we're feeling under the weather because again, it has orange, it has clove, it has cinnamon, it has the, the tools that we already knew about from our past. Okay. And um, if you're just wanting the individual oil too, like you just want orange oil, just want lemon oil, those are available as well. I do have one question for you guys. Does anyone know how drugs are made? Where do drugs come from, pharmaceutical drugs? Give you a hint, it's the same source, okay? Um, they come from plants. They start at plants, but you can't really patent nature. You can't patent a plant. You could be like, I patent this rose, and it is now this pharmaceutical company's rose. So what they do is they create a synthetic version of that plant or that herb or whatever it is, and then build from there to extend shelf life, to make it cheaper, to whatever, whatever, X, Y, or Z, right? They add other things. In. So this is just bringing it back to that nature, nature in a bottle, if you will. <laughs> so here's where it comes from. First, you have to grow it. Someone has to plant it. Then somebody harvests it. I like this lady, her name is Hella, which is she's dear to me because my mom's name is Hella. And she's harvesting jasmine in Egypt. Okay, jasmine is a really hard flower to harvest because the oil is only available before sunrise. So you have to get up really early and harvest the plant then. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, I can just go pick jasmine. It's a specific moment where this oil is most available. Then you have to distill it, and there are different ways that you can get the oil out. You can steam it, you can cold press it, whatever it is, it's just trying to separate the oil molecule from the plant-based uh, stems or flowers or whatever it is. Now I know at this point a lot of people are like, but this stuff is in my kitchen, right? <laughs> like I've got lemon, I've got orange, I've got thyme and rosemary. Essential oils are different because they're highly volatile compounds. That means they're extremely potent. Just to give you an idea, one drop of peppermint oil is the equivalent of 28 cups of peppermint tea. Just one drop. Okay, and at the end, you can come here and just open the bottle of peppermint yourself and it like stings you in your eyes. You're like, whoa, that's, that is strong. Okay. Give you another idea, it takes over 200,000 rose petals just to create a small five milliliter. When I'm talking five milliliters, this is this size small five milliliter bottle of rose oil, 200,000 petals. Okay. So it's not as simple as just going to your kitchen and like rubbing orange peels on, <laughs> on you. Also, um, you gotta be careful um, when buying essential oils because purity matters. There was a recent study done by Aroma Head Institute. They're um, an institute for aromatherapy and they found out that 95% of the oils on the market are adulterated. That means that there's fillers and there's extra content in there that is not the essential oil, right? There might, and we, we don't actually know, like, is there only 1% of essential oil in there? Is there really any essential oil in there? Um, so that's why sometimes like you go to Whole Foods, even or Walmart or wherever you go, essential oils are everywhere. I even saw it at Macy's last week. I was like, what? even at Macy's, and you'll find like a bottle of frankincense, which is one of the most expensive oils um, because of how hard it is to, to harvest, you see it for like $5, okay? Whereas doTERRA sells it for about $80. Big difference, um, why? Because doTERRA holds themselves to a high standard called the 
uh, CPTG standard, Certified Pure, Pure Therapeutic Grade. That means they guarantee that this oil is 100% pure, and to like back it up more, they have a third party test it for them. So they're so confident of how pure it is, they let someone else test it. And each bottle of doTERRA, if you look at the bottom, has its own unique identifying number. If you go to source to youcom okay, you will get the full report of exactly where this oil came from and what chemical components are in it that make up the oil. You get a full chemistry report, so you could be a total chemist if you really wanted to. Okay. So that's great. Again, it just shows the integrity of doTERRA. Also, sourcing matters. Where you get the oil matters, right? Um, you do not necessarily, you don't want an orange from, I don't know, Canada. You want an orange from Florida, right? Why? Because where a plant grows is where um, the soil matters, the sunlight matters, the, and some plants have the genetic capability to change their um, chemotype which is the, chemis the chemistry component, based on where they're grown, okay? So I've got two pictures here. Um, so just the green part of the plant, not the flower part. The green part is thyme, okay? But this is thyme chemotype thymol, which comes from um, Spain. And this is thyme chemotype linalool, which comes from France, okay? Now, if the company doesn't tell you which type of thyme that you're using, you'll have extremely different effects because thyme thymol is a warm oil and it's used more as like a kind of antibacterial thing for short-term ailments like colds and flus and whatever. But thyme linalool is a cooling oil and it's used to help promote sleep. So can you imagine if you're trying to help your kid go to sleep and you're rubbing hot oil on them because you don't know, right? So with doTERRA, you know, because it will tell you the chemotype right on the bottle. And again, if you go to that website, you'll know all the chemistry of that oil. So you don't have to be concerned that you're not using it properly. And just for fun, here's the sourcing map from doTERRA, right? So they literally go all around the world to find the best source of that plant, right? You're gonna get, you're gonna get lavender from France. You're gonna get lemon and bergamot from Italy, right? The nice Italian lemon grove, right? You're gonna get uh, these beautiful flowers of, of uh, neroli and jasmine from Egypt, right? So you're getting the plant where it's meant to be grown, right? It's not, they're not doing it in a basement somewhere. So that's just kind of the background of oils and where they come from. Okay, does anyone have any questions here before we really dig in deeper? So the frankincense is from Oman? Frankincense is from Somalia. But the area over here, there is Oman. Oh, you're right, Oman. They get it from Yemen, actually. I was told they get it from Somalia. I mean, somewhere. Yeah. It's both. Maybe it's both. Maybe there's two types. But any other questions? I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in sourcing the oils from, these are all natural from France and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then every once in a while, you have like natural disasters or something mm -hmm. that's for example, in Korea, when Japan or, you know, they had um, some issues, like a lot of the Korean, the seafood was, people were told don't eat Japanese seafood for mm -hmm. a long time. What measures are taken to like um, account for disasters like that as they happen? Yeah, oh, Jeff. Oh. That's a good question. We actually, every year they do test all the toxicity in a very detailed see if this part of the chemical is the, uh, reach the standard, if not, or if they have something extra, like additional added or something, a third party test would actually reject that year's product. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> perfect. Any 
other questions about just oils, where they come from? Okay. Now, moving on to understanding how they work, okay, you need to really understand the mind-body connection. Okay, so the, has anyone heard of a researcher, a famous like, old, old guy who passed away, named um, Pavlov? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. should ring a bell. <laughs> All right, so Pavlov um, was a Russian physiologist, and he did, his primary research was interested in how the body prepares um, to digest food, right? So what he discovered is that when you are thinking, for instance, about you're about ready to eat a steak, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna eat a steak, and then you see the steak approaching you, um, your body would prepare you by secreting enzymes and acids in order to digest that steak without you even having taken one bite yet, okay? Which is pretty cool. We're gonna try it out so I can show you how it works, right? So I want everyone to imagine a lemon, and if you forgot what it looks like, this is a lemon. <laughs> and I want everyone to just hold your lemon in your hand. Just, just smell the lemon. Ah, lemon, mm. <laughs> right? And then just like slice it, slice your lemon, okay? And then we're gonna take a bite out of your lemon. Ready? One, two, three. Who's got some water in their mouth? Okay. Yeah, because again, your body is preparing you for that lemon. I will say, when I'm looking around, everyone went. <laughs> <laughs> again, there's no lemon. There's no lemon in this room. But that is the power of your mind preparing your body. That's the mind-body connection. Yeah. Specifically, actually, our brain is linked with our gut through a nerve called the vagus nerve. Vegas with an A, not Vegas like Las Vegas. Like. Mm. Um, so there is uh, an entire nerve that is linked between these two really important organs. And it's a, it's a bi-directional bi um, nerve. So the brain sends signals to the gut to prepare it for digestion and whatever. And the gut sends back information to the brain. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that the gut actually produces neurotransmitters, which are your brain's chemicals to communicate with each other. So we've got, maybe you've heard of serotonin. Has anyone heard of serotonin? That's a neurotransmitter. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. Well, we're recently discovering that about 95% of our neurotransmitters are actually um, created in our gut. Think about that for a second. If you have gut problems, right, but at 2 p.m. you're feeling sluggish and down, could it possibly be because you're having maybe some gut issues, right? That's because this is where your mood is, the mood factory, if you will, right? So if your gut is too busy trying to fix itself, it doesn't have enough time to create serotonin or dopamine or whatever. I'll go into it more in a few slides. Okay. But I do want to mention that doTERRA has an answer for this. Now, a lot of people don't know that the number one bestseller in doTERRA is actually not an oil. It's the lifelong vitality pack. It's these set of three pills right here. Okay. What is lifelong vitality? Like I said, three pills. So the first one is called the Alpha CRS. This one is um, the, this one, sorry, whoa, whoa. this one supports your cells building blocks, right? So inside of your cell, there's something called a mitochondria. If you ever took biology, you might have heard of that. Mitochondria is your cell's energy source, right? So um, from food, it creates something called ATP, and ATP is what energizes your cells. Unfortunately, not all of us have the best diet. And even if we try to have like the most organic and the most fresh and all the colors and all the greens and all the everything, okay? It's just the fact that our soil today in America is not um, strong enough to produce the best nutrients in our food. So, th and then add to that, we have absorption problems in our gut, right? So this helps support um, your cell to be able to give you 
energy throughout your day. The micro complex, the uh, VM, is your vitamins and minerals. Um, now, what I what's different about this because a lot of people, I mean, who takes a multi multivitamin or you try to, right? A lot of people they take your multivitamins, okay? But what's different about those multivitamins and this one is that DoTerra puts the the vitamins in a whole food format. So what that means is when you look at these ingredients, you'll see things like broccoli, kale, pineapple, okay? Why do they do that? Because if it's in a whole food form, your body recognizes it, can digest it, and then you can actually absorb it and use it, okay? Um, so you won't find any synthetic fillers or anything in here. It's just, again, vitamin A, C, D, E, K, every, like everything, <laughs> plus all the minerals. Right. And then you've got your omegas, right? And we've, we've heard a lot about these too. Like you hear about take fish oil, take DHA, omega-3, omega-6, omega, 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 omega. So omegas are important for supporting brain health. So in this one, again, you have all the important omega DHA, omega-3, omega-6, okay? What, all, all the omegas, <laughs> okay? Um, plus they add in a, a bit of the essential oils that they know are good for whole body support, like boswellia, which is frankincense, um, which is good for anti-inflammatory properties throughout your whole system, right? So that's just a quick overview, but one way that you can help your longevity, your lifelong vitality, that's why it's called lifelong vitality, is by taking the right types of vitamins, minerals, and omegas that will support your body with maximum absorption. Does that make sense with everything? Any, any questions on that? All right, so moving on to your brain, this is your limbic system of your brain. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go through each single section. Oh, the vitamins. I won't go back, let's go back to the vitamins. So you don't yeah, have to. no, no, it's cool. Do we have to take it any time or is it early in the morning, empty stomach, just food? Okay, the best thing to do is take it with food, multiple yeah. reasons. One reason, um, it helps prevent potential upset stomach. Everybody's a little different. But two, again, when you're taking it with food and it's a whole food format, it's just increasing the absorbability into your body. So you definitely want to take it with food. You're going to take it twice a day. So you see what that looks like to you. I personally, I take it with breakfast and lunch. Right. Again, remember this first one, the alpha, is going to give you energy. So Maybe you don't want to take that at 11 p.m. Does it hurt you without sleep? Hmm? If I take it night time? Would that For some it? people it does. Right, because like I said, this helps support the energy part of your cells. For me, I mean, I don't know, I'm always energized. So for me, it doesn't make a difference if I take it at night. Um, but I know with my dad, it he's like fully alert if he takes it at night. So it's, it's recommended to take it breakfast and lunch. Okay. Great, great question. Any, anything else about these? Excellent. So the limbic system in your brain I'm not going to yet go through each single part, don't worry, because I know everybody sees the brain, they're like, oh no, I'm, I didn't think I was taking a science class. But I will say that the limbic system is um, how we regulate stress, right? And it's all due to what's called the amygdala, what's colored purple on this. Right? So the amygdala is um, the part of our brain that recognizes if we're in a stressful situation. And by the way, it doesn't have to be real stress. It, has, it can even be imagined stress or future stress. So if you're thinking about a deadline or if you're thinking about a project or you're thinking about, oh, my husband's not going to like what I just purchased, <laughs> whatever, whatever that is that you're thinking about, you could potentially trigger um, what's called a fight or flight response. So there are two systems with, within there. Okay, We have our stress system, which is called the sympathetic nervous system and then we've got what I call the peace system the parasympathetic nervous system so let's start the parasympathetic you're usually in a parasympathetic state when you're asleep in fact you cannot be asleep unless you're in the parasympathetic system okay during the parasympathetic time your brain finally gets a chance to rest digest and restore so it does a lot of restorative functions. The liver kicks in, detoxes. The kidney detoxes. 
whatever your body needs to do, it finally gets a chance to get everything done, consolidate all the information from the day. Now, during the day, ideally, we're in homeostasis, which is if this thing was balanced, right? We wouldn't be completely in the parasympathetic because then we'd be narcoleptic and falling asleep every five seconds. But we don't want to be constantly in a state of stress. So what happens when you're in the sympathetic nervous system? Like I said, it's something called fight or flight. You're in a heightened state of stress, so your body's ready to battle, right? So it's either going to fight whatever it or thinks it needs to fight something, right? Or it's going to try to run away. There's actually other responses like freezing, playing dead, you know, all, all those other types of uh, responses. Did anybody read last month there was a guy hiking in California and he came across a mountain lion? Maybe read about this bear hand. Yeah, and he like strangled. He was like, I got this. Oh. Okay, he was in the parasympathetic state and he decided to fight. He took down that mountain lion. Okay. So in the par in the sorry, in the sympathetic state, there's a lot of adrenaline. There's a lot of um, cortisol going through your body, pumping through, right? Getting you ready to go. Like, Aah! well, what if that is just sitting in traffic? Then then what are you supposed to? There's nothing for you to attack, right? So your body's going through stress without an outlet. Right? So what are the effects of prolonged stress, right? Because do we experience... Do we experience stress for just one minute and then it's done? No. Okay, do we experience stress one day and not the next day? We, we're pretty much experiencing stress often, often. Okay, let me tell you also this. Once you trigger the fight or flight, you're in it for at least 30 minutes. Okay, so all these effects I'm about to tell you about are happening to your body for at least 30 minutes. Could be longer, right? Yeah. So um, behind every thought, there is an emotion. Yeah. And behind every emotion, there's a thought. Yeah. But if your thought never stops, your emotion is running around like, all the time. <laughs> and yeah. so your heart and your muscles, your neck are always under stress. Yeah. No, absolutely. Right? Our thoughts dictate our emotions. Our emotions dictate our behavior. And it's a two-way street. It can go backwards as well. Right? So absolutely, what happens when you're stressed? Your heart will start to pump faster. Okay, uh, your arteries will start to dilate, which means they get fatter. Or sorry, they constrict. They get smaller. Okay. Um, the reason they do that, with a smaller hole, the blood can go faster. Okay, think of like a hose, a garden hose, right? If you go like this, the water will like shoot out really hard, right? Like, and you're like. Oh. Right? Versus if you let the whole hose go, it's just like flowing out easily. Okay. So the heart goes faster and const uh, the arteries constrict. Okay. Why does that happen? Again, because if you're going to be fighting a mountain lion, you want to be able to pump blood as fast as you can to your muscles and all the important organs that help you run away. Right? But over time, if you're constantly in this phase, what do you think? That could lead to a constricted artery and lots of pumping. What do you think could happen? Heart attack. Yeah. Heart attack. Heart attack. Or damage, right? So an artery can also burst. Okay. If it bursts in the brain, that's called a stroke. Okay. If it bursts in the heart, that's called a heart attack. Okay. So either way, it's not it's not good, right? Your lungs, right? So during times of stress, your lungs. Um, the, the the tubes, which I forgot the name of right now, like I'm having a brain fart. Thank you. <laughs> they get fatter to allow you, again, to bring in more air. Okay? Again, when you're running away, great, because you want a lot of oxygen to help pump you through. Right? But now let's combine. If your heart is racing, and you're breathing, what, what does that look like? I think I did. It's a panic attack, right? Mm -hmm. Your heart's like, tuh, 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 and you're like, <sighs> you're like hyperventilating, right? I used to experience panic attacks myself, so I could tell you it does feel like a heart attack. You think that that's what's happening to you, and you end up going to the emergency room, and the doctor's like, you have experienced a panic attack. I'm like, for real? Like, I'm not dying? Are you sure? 
Because that's what it feels like, right? Your hands get cold, your heart goes fast, and you're, you can't breathe because you're breathing too much. Okay. That's a panic. All right, another thing that happens is your blood glucose um, elevates, right? So blood glucose is the sugar in your blood that basically helps give you energy, again, to be able to run away or attack or whatever it might be. Now, over time, blood sugar, uh, as blood sugar increases, insulin also increases to help counteract that glucose, right? But eventually, it can lead to insulin resistance. And what is that associated with? Diabetes. Diabetes, exactly. But specifically type 2 diabetes. All right, now I'm bringing it back to your gut, okay? We already talked about the importance of your gut in that not only does it help you digest, but it's important for creating the neurotransmitters for your brain that help you with mood, with anxiety, with, um, with regulating um, the rest of the hormones in your body. Okay? Well, when you're in the sympathetic state, digestion in your gut pretty much shut down, no more. So the obvious effects just from digestion could be, what do you guys think? If your gut is not processing the food, you can, anything, right? This is where individual differences come in. It could be constipation for you. It might be irritable bowel syndrome. It might be the opposite of constipation. <laughs> just going, going through, okay? That's the digestive properties, but it also means that the gut is not in full functioning mode for creating those neurotransmitters to send to your brain. Okay. So anyone ever hear that? Like, just go with your gut feeling. <laughs> Literally, because your gut creates or helps create your feelings. Okay. So if your gut is shut down, not only are you not digesting, you're not feeling, literally, you're not feeling happy. Right. By the way, I just skimmed the surface. Okay. I'm not going to go into literally every single body system. But the effects of stress are widespread. They affect every part of our body. If you're experiencing fertility issues, um, uh, hormonal issues, what have you, it's all because, or a lot of it stems from stress, prolonged stress. Okay. So what triggers stress? Well, there's a lot. I mean, work, right? We've got work, we've got bosses, we've got deadlines. We've got just life. Life happens, life in general, like unexpected things. We've got husbands and wives and children and right, just everything, right? Um, social media is a big one, especially for the younger generation. In the last three years, there's been a 114% rise in teen suicide, okay? And it's been linked with social media and this fear of being left out, right? Of not connecting with other people. So that is another source of stress. We don't sleep well, we don't eat well, right? That's all the stuff that kind of we interact with on the daily basis intentionally, right? But then there's all the unintentional things. So this is all the stuff I have in blue, okay? Our household products, our beauty products, okay? They contain toxins that our body gets, puts, gets put under stress and has to deal with also, right? So pesticides like glyphosate. Um, glyphosate is what's used as a weed killer, okay? But it was also used as Agent Orange in Vietnam. <laughs> the highest levels of glyphosate have been found in Cheerios, oh my God. and they've been found in um, Quaker Oats oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I threw that. When I found that out, I threw my, <laughs> I was like, nope. Right? Um, so all these other things that we're not even aware of, the antibiotics in our food, the added hormones, the pesticides, herbicide, carcinogens, molds, all these other things that we're dealing with daily and we're not even aware of, they're completely under the surface, but our body deals with it. The EPA just came out with a study five years ago that said that the air inside our homes is two to 500% more toxic than the air outside. The air inside our home is more toxic than the air outside. Why? They attribute it largely to our household cleaning products. We teach a whole other class about household cleaning products. So if you're interested in that, definitely come back to hear about that one. So 
here's the thing, right? Over time, I think of stress okay, as this, uh, this cup of water, right? Ideally, we're at optimal health and we have very low levels of stress, very little water. Okay? So our health is doing just peachy, perfect, perfect. We're like superstars. Most of us, though, we're here. Okay. Um, we're, we're okay. We feel good most of the time. We don't have any um, issues that we're aware of. We're not like diabetic or we don't have cholesterol problems. Whatever. We're just kind of skimming by. Okay. But the more stress we add on, eventually, okay, doo -doo -doo -doo, this is where we usually receive a medical diagnosis when we go to the doctor. Okay. And then they say, oh, you've got high levels of cholesterol or you've got this, this, or that. So this is usually when we go to the doctor. Over here, we're not really going to the doctor. We're like, oh, my back hurts, or oh, you know, but I'm okay. Life goes on, like, let's go. <laughs> Only when there's a big uh-oh, we're like, let's go to the doctor. Um, by the way, this is not to like rat on doctors. Okay, I have a lot of friends who are doctors. They genuinely go in to help people. Right? It's just the state of affairs right now um, with people constantly under stress and people now constantly getting more sick than they ever have before, doctors are overwhelmed. Okay? The average doctor only spends about seven minutes with a patient. You can't really get to a root cause of a problem in seven minutes. It takes like a deep conversation. So unfortunately, all they have time for is dealing with symptoms making you feel more comfortable. That is the goal. How can I make you feel more comfortable? Not necessarily, how can I eradicate this illness, right? So we have to be proactive about our own health. We kind of have to take charge. You have to listen to your body. You are your own best doctor when you're here. <laughs> okay. Once you get here, yes, you'll need some serious attention. So how do we empty our water cups? How do we get better, back to better health? What do you guys think? What can, what's one option? What can you do? Diet and exercise. Yeah, yeah. all the, all the wonderful it. things that you can support a healthy lifestyle by. All the things your doctor always says, but you never understand why. <laughs> Diet, exercise, taking a vacation. <laughs> my oh my, wouldn't that be nice? Just hop on the plane and let's go to Italy, like tomorrow. Let's go, come on, all right? And this is, by the way, how a lot of us kind of deal with things, right? Your water cup is like filling and then you like take a vacation. It's like we're kind of like in this weird balance. Uh, unfortunately, Americans as an entire society, we don't take as much vacation as we should. Um, even people who do receive higher vacation days don't cash in on those days. And so we're, we're overworked, overstressed. We don't get a break. So while it would be nice to hop on a plane and go to Italy, um, some people even can't afford it, right? We don't have the time, we don't have the money. So what can you do? Walk like an ancient Egyptian. <laughs> you can do as the ancient Egyptians did, okay? And they used essential oils. And like I said, a lot of ancient cultures used essential oils to help their bodies, to help them deal with stress, to help them empty that water cup so they can take charge of their health. Because think about it, the body is amazing. You break a bone, does the doctor really do it? The doctor puts a cast. Is the doctor growing your bone back? The bone the bone the bone does its own thing. Like that's that's the body. Right? So if your body can grow back a bone, don't you think it can help you eradicate, I don't know, a runny nose or a cold or whatever? If you give it the right support tools, right? You, the right support tool for a broken bone is a cast. That's the support tool. Okay. Essential oils are also a good support tool when it comes for mood or when it comes to um, mild ailments. Okay. So there are two ways that um, I like to use essential oils and that's aromatically. So that's by smelling it. So literally you can, if you want like really fast, you could just like pick up the bottle and just like, ooh, <laughs> ooh ah, amazing, right? Or you can add a few drops in a diffuser, and I'll, I'll talk about how that works in a second. And what's great about um, smelling essential oils is it's fast acting, so it takes about 22 seconds to enter your brain and start its work. Or you can use it topically, 
So you di what that means is you take the oil, you dilute it in a carrier oil, so something like coconut oil, um, avocado oil, jojoba oil, whatever oil works best for your skin. I like to use coconut oil because it's not as clogging to the pores. So you dilute it, and then you put it on the spot that hurts, right? Or the spot that has an issue. Okay, so um, my daughter was tugging at her ear, so I was like, uh-oh. Like an, I don't know, is an ear infection happening? I don't know. So far, so good. But I've got my arsenal of tools to help me support her. So I whipped up what uh, two oils that I know help with ear um, aches: is lavender and alaluca, or tea tree. That's a lame one. So I whipped up a little bottle of that and rubbed it outside her ear. Never put something inside. So I rubbed it outside. She wasn't tugging at it anymore. No fever, no nothing. She's fine. So using topically is good for targeted situations. So how does it work? Well, again, it comes back to the limbic system of your brain. Why? Because these two little knobs right here, that's your sense of smell. That's called the olfactory bulb. So as you're smelling something, these bulbs pick it up and send it to the emotional part of your brain. The first stop is the amygdala. And the amygdala, as we know, is what helps regulate our stress response. So the minute you're feeling stressed, you smell something nice, it calms you down. It can help calm you down, get you out of that state, help you go back into homeostasis or the parasympathetic calm. Right? So the amygdala is with emotions. The next stop is the hippocampus. It's, it's going to go through the entire system. It's not just going to emotions and being like, I'm done now, thank you. It's going to go through the whole journey. The next stop on the journey is the hippocampus. Hippocampus has to do with learning, memory, and attention. So there are oils that have been researched that help um, with attention. Rosemary, peppermint, orange. Great for helping support attention. Next stop, hypothalamus and pituitary. Oh, sorry, the frontal lobe, which is intellectual processes like thinking. Next up, the hypothalamus. So that's your hormonal response. Okay, It works directly with your endocrine system. So it goes to your uh, reproductive system. It goes to your thyroid. It goes to uh, your adrenal glands, which are part of your kidneys. And from there, it will either secrete cortisol, which is the stress, or hopefully you smelt something that helps you calm down, so it will uh, secrete something like estrogen or testosterone, which helps reduce your stress. Right. All that from just smelling something. <laughs> 22 seconds. Okay. Let's try it out. Okay, so everyone, if you please just stand up. So one of the things you can do which is really easy without even buying anything, is something called the 444 technique. So whenever you find yourself a little anxious, a little stressed, a little like, oh, I'm sitting in this traffic, and I'm so, uh, okay, all you have to do is breathe in for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, and then breathe out for four seconds. Okay, so everyone, we're gonna do it together. Ready? Breathe in for four seconds. Hold. And then out through your nose. And you should already start to feel a little percentage of relaxation, right? When I look around the room, what I saw is a lot of shoulders go, right? So we're going to do it again, but this time I'm going to pair it with an oil, and we're going to, like, enhance. So let's see. Let's do that one. So you're just going to um, put your hand out like this. I'm going to rub some oil. In, and then just wait for me. <laughs> get it in every, everywhere. Get, get it everywhere. I was trying not to fall or anything. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do, you're going to rub your hands together. That enhances the aromatic compound, okay? And now we're going to do the 4-4-4 four, four, four again, but you're going to cup your hands over your nose and smell the, smell it. Okay, so in for four, hold for four, out for four. Ready? In. Hold. Release. Okay. You can do it again. Just like so in for four. Hold. Release. That's right. Which one is this? So this one's magnolia. Okay. Magnolia is a flower and it has the high, highest concentration of a chemotype called linalool. And linalool is a chemical component that helps you relax and ease anxiety. I so, feel sensitive on the other part. Yeah, I'm already I'm like, ah, I feel it. I feel it too. Now, now I'm like, I'm ready to go, right? So, so there you go. All right, give it a few more seconds and maybe you too will just be like, they also say, by the way, if it, there's a smell you don't like, that's the one you need the most. Really? Oh, yeah. So I don't particularly like I the like smell. This I don't like <laughs> this one. I don't like this one. Right? It's like, but I guess I need to like calm down. Right? Um, but I noticed that you did it directly from the bottle with no carrier oil. So this one, okay, this one's pre-diluted. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Any, right. any one of doTERRA's that come with a roller, Okay. It's usually pre diluted. All right, yeah. thank you. So it has the oil. Don't worry. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just wondering. Safety if, first. If for the smelling, you're supposed to do it at that. I got you. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about safety towards the end. Now, um, I mentioned to you guys in the very, very beginning that the essential oils come from different types of flowers and plants. So I'm just going to quickly go through each of them and give you one property of many of these plants just to give you an idea of where your journey can begin. So let's start with the citrus. All right, so citrus oils, um, the number one thing that they do is uplift you, right? So when you smell an orange or a lemon, grapefruit, well, any type of citrus is supposed to get you pumped for your day. Specifically, in the research literature, orange has been shown to even help support positivity. So when you find yourself just kind of feeling like uh, negative self-talk, and you, and you catch yourself, you're like, wait a minute, I need to think of myself in a more positive way. Orange can help support that. Um, spices, so this is like um, black pepper, pink pepper, um, clove. Uh, these are supposed to be intriguing to your senses, right? Kind of get you ready to explore, ready to find something new, ready to find passion in your life again. Like anybody ever hit this like wall and you're like, oh, same thing every day. This is supposed, it's like walking through a spice market, right? You're like, I'm excited. I'm ready to see things. So black pepper has also been shown to help stimulate attention, to help you focus. Um, again, because it's so awakening, so intriguing, it like helps helps you zone in more. Then there's herbs and grasses. These are very restoring. Um, and as we know, right, herbs help heal certain things too. It brings us back to our uh, natural states. And Melissa, this is the most expensive oil on the market. Okay, Melissa, how much? 135? Yeah, it was 150 now. Ooh, now it's most expensive one because it's the hardest one to get. Melissa has been shown to calm emotions and reduce sad feelings. So it's a very powerful oil, also shown to help reduce stress. It's like number one stress relief oil. Really, really like that. Then there's the trees. These are very balancing. And if you think of a tree, right, it's got deep roots. It helps bring you back to your center, midline strong, as Dr. Desmond likes to teach us. Um, so these are things from like frankincense and uh, arbobite and anything that comes from a tree, cedar wood. And frankincense, king of oils, it's been shown to aid in learning and memory. Frankincense actually, the reason it's been nicknamed king of oils is because when in doubt use frankincense. 
<laughs> you're just not sure what's wrong. You're like, well, I'm just going to put some frankincense on it, and more than likely something good will happen. It's a really great oil to have. Um, then the florals. Lavender. We've all heard of lavender, right? Everyone said, oh, lavender, you know, when you go to a massage and you want to sleep, lavender pillows, lavender on your pillow. Lavender, geranium, rose, jasmine, magnolia, the flower we smell. They're very common. Chamomile is a very interesting one because it's been researched with kids' hyperactivity and it's been shown to help calm them down. That's powerful, right? Just diffuse some of that in a room and it'll Stillness. And then finally, there's the mints. And mints are very energizing, right? You just open a bottle of peppermint and you're like, whoa, hello, right? Um, I actually ran out of peppermint, so I don't have any to <laughs> just there. I just reordered it. But again, you just open that bottle and it wakes you right up. Um, the reason I'm out of it is because I usually kind of drive with it. So whenever I find myself being like, I just <laughs> like a crazy person, but it helps because then I'm alert and I'm ready to continue on the road. So it's really, really great oil. Um, these are a great category of oils to have. All right. Peppermint, again, see, helps with focus and cognitive performance. So it helps you think clear. Literally clears everything, clears your airways, clears your brain. All right, so that was how oils work when you smell them. Right? Then there's the topical, you can put them on your body, right? So like I mentioned with my daughter with her ears, I rub something around her ears. Um, so how does that work? Because your skin is your largest organ, okay? And it's your outwardly facing organ. So anything that you put on your skin gets absorbed, you see here, and goes straight to your bloodstream. These are your blood vessels. And then it, from there, it circulates throughout your whole body. It usually takes about 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, so this is a slower acting, um, huh? Two minutes. Two minutes. No, but to go through your whole body. Oh, your whole body. Your whole body, 20 minutes, right? To start, it affects two minutes. Okay. But a whole body recycling takes 20 minutes. Um, what was I saying here? So this is, yes, it's slower acting, um, but it's, uh, what? Can I use that? It's kind of like, you know when you take, some people take like Advil, right? There's like the fast release and then the slow release mm -hmm. part, right? So it's to help you sustain, that's what I'm, <laughs> sustain the effect for longer. So if you're having a stomach ache, like I mentioned when I did, I took Digest Zen, which is the digestive blend that they have. I uh, took one drop, and then I put some carrier oil, rubbed it on my tummy. Okay. Yeah, and within two minutes, I started feeling a little better. But after 20 minutes, actually for me, it took an hour. Okay. So it's not like it's a magic, like, woo, 20 minutes, I'm perfect. Okay. Um, it circulates, and then I really started to feel better. So would you say skin application was faster than ingesting it because I would have expected you to drink it, not rub it I on. Um, I personally, the reason I didn't even include ingesting as an option, there are people who ingest them, is I personally haven't researched it enough and I don't like recommending something that I have not researched thoroughly, right? Um, so there's a lot of chemistry involved when it comes to ingesting something um, and a lot of safety considerations and different things that you can ingest and cannot ingest, so I can't really speak to speak to the ingesting. Right. Um, but yes, I do know there are people who ingest, but I've found similar effects just topically. Again, because it's going through your bloodstream, so it's going to go to the organs that you need it. It's gonna go to your stomach, it's gonna go to your lungs, it's gonna go to your pancreas, your gallbladder, your whatever. All right, so to kind of show you um, some of the oils, these are doTERRA's top 10 oils. And uh, the reason they're the top 10 is because they have so many uses within themselves, right? So it's a great way to start um, with selecting one of these. 
So the first four, so Oregano, Maluca, On Guard, Frankincense, these are the ones that support your immune system. Right? So whenever you feel a little tickle in your throat, or you're starting to feel under the weather, um, you can use one of those, or you can even combine them in a blend. Right? When you really want to like kick it, you're like, nope, nope, I'm not going to be sick, not today. Like you kind of like power blast it, right, um, throughout your entire system for different reasons, right? Uh, I'm not going to go again into specifics because I could lecture about it all day long, but oregano, for instance, has been shown in the literature to have antibacterial properties. Uh, same with Maluca, frankincense we know is anti-inflammatory, and On Guard has, like I mentioned at the very beginning, a lot of those um, natural things that help support the immune system, like the orange, like clove, like cinnamon, whatever, right? What's great about these oils is some of them have more than one property, right? Like you can use On Guard to support your immune system, but you can also use it to create a soap, like an antibacterial soap, for instance, or an antibacterial spray. I know I've replaced all the products in my home just using On Guard, right? So I have dish soap, laundry detergent, <laughs> hand wash, sanitizing spray, all just by using On Guard and lemon, because lemon is also a cleansing tool. Uh, lemon is also good for detoxing, and because it's a citrus, it's good for uplifting the mood. So again, you're getting three uses out of just one, one bottle. Um, lavender is great because, again, it's a flower that we know is calming, but lavender is one of the few oils that's actually an antihistamine. Right? So whenever you feel kind of like a runny nose or um, something similar coming on, lavender is something... Uh, I had a runny nose, I just put it on the bridge of my nose. That's all I did. Right. Um, in the beginning, I did for every every 15 minutes until it started feeling seemed like I did it for an hour, every 15 minutes. And then after that, I cut it back to like every hour or two. Right. And then it like dried up. One day, all it took. Cut that. Cut. <laughs> Punch that out of the system. Actually, it was all in our house. My daughter, my husband, we are all like... So I just like, lavender, here we go. Um, my husband himself, he's, uh, he has had asthma his entire life, and he has allergies. And it's really difficult to visit my mom because she's got cats. <laughs> so anytime uh, we used to go there, he used to just try to pop like a Zyrtec or a Claritin. Right? But then we had these oils, and we're like, well, let's just see. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, let's try. Maybe. Maybe. So, um. I looked through my resources and I found I should use lavender again because antihistamine. Uh, peppermint is good for opening up the airways and so is eucalyptus. It's not part of the top 10, but I so happened to have it. So I blended those three together and he rolled it under his nose and on his chest and on his feet. He was good. No more Zyrtec for him. We can now visit my mom's house in peace. No asthma, no allergy, no nothing. Not saying it's going to work for everybody. It's not one size fits all necessarily, but you find the blend that works for you. Some of it is trial and error. Um, they do have their own breathe blend, respiratory blend, right? So whenever you're feeling a little congested, um, that kind of like mucusy, right? You can go for breathe because breathe has it has eucalyptus, it has peppermint. So again, those open the airways, and they. Um, uh, break up the mucus, right? And it has a bunch of other oils that also help with that. Where's my breeze? Here's breeze. So it's got um, Maluca, lemon, cardamom, and raven sera, which is also good for supporting breathing in your lungs. Another great blend to have. Digestion, I feel like I've knocked that one out, I guess, for anything digestive problem. And then Deep Blue. So this is the one um, that converts a lot of people. Um, I was, my dad is a hard guy to please, right? He's uh, very stuck in his ways. He's, he's kind of like a pill addict. This guy has a pill for every ill that he has. Like anything is pill. Um, but I finally convinced him to just try doTERRA. And he's like, well, I don't want the whole thing. I don't want anything. I was like, okay, okay. What is your number one thing that you deal with daily? He said, well, I've got a lot of aches and pains, especially joints, muscles. I'm getting older. 
and he plays a lot of sports, right? And he's a mechanic, so like I have all that, like his back, his knees, his everything. Um, so I all I did was order him deep blue oil, and um, I also ordered him uh, what I call the Advil equivalent to doTERRA, which is a deep blue um, pill, which is like Advil form, like kind of like Advil but natural. So I ordered him those two things, and I told him, Dad, all you gotta do, one drop of deep blue, plus the carrier oil, rub it on whatever hurts. My dad used to take a dose of three Advil three times a day, which is like more than <laughs> three times a day. He called me up two days ago, and he said, Amira, it's been three weeks, I have not taken a single Advil, all because deep blue helps relief He's like, I've slept for the first time in a long time because I'm not in pain anymore. So deep blue aches, pains. Also good for tension headaches. All right, cool. So to wrap it up, one, one last thing. I mentioned you want to be safe when you use your oils. I'm not going to go into the detail of how to dilute. Um, we can talk about that in person. That's like a whole lecture. If you want to take a quick like screenshot of some of these Percentages, you can, right? But you always want to dilute your oil, sometimes more depending on who it is, like for a baby or pregnant people. Less is more, okay? You don't have to like douse yourself in oil. Uh, like I told you when I had my stomach problem yesterday, one drop is all it took. For my dad, one drop of deep blue on his knee is all it takes. Less is more, more often, right? So you can do more throughout the day, small doses. And hopefully have some common sense. Avoid your eyes. Avoid ear, like inside the ear, inside your nose, genital areas, you know, sensitive area. Um, and be sure to just again get educated. Yeah, I can educate you. You can go online. There's books, right? Some oils, especially citrus oils, have some photosensitivity, so you don't want to put a citrus oil like on your skin and then go out in the sunlight because you'll get sunburned. <laughs> okay. Um, so. When you dilute, though, the chance of that is smaller. So the key takeaway today, these oils have been researched for a long time. The knowledge is ancient. We, we know about it. It's well-researched. They're very simple to use, very effective. There's no side effects because it's, it's nature. It's natural, right? Um, generally, there's quick responses, okay? but it is not a miracle cure okay you have you can't just be like i'm not motivated i'm sad oh they have motivation oils i'm just gonna rub that everywhere oh i'm still not motivated <laughs> okay it doesn't work like that it's it's just a tool to have in your health toolbox of being proactive you have to have the right diet you have to move a little bit i'm not saying go to the gym okay just move your body a little bit um, and this is just another tool to help you take care of yourself to empty that cup. Yeah. Oh no, it's oh, okay. and Ruth. Okay. 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 I have to. All right. So to wrap it up, why do I personally choose DoTerra? Aside from all the many reasons I already gave, right? Um, I've seen a huge change in myself. Right. Um, I used to suffer through a lot of panic and anxiety. Of, uh, anger, which is like hard to admit, right? I had anger issues, really quick to trigger, right? But using um, these oils has helped support and balance my mood and balance my hormones. <laughs> That's been the biggest change for me is balancing hormones, especially when I started taking these pills together. Okay, um, my husband noticed. <laughs> that's that's how you know he's like, you're not, you're not, you're not angry. I'm like, yeah. He's like, can I order some of those pills too? <laughs> He's like, I gotta try that out. Like, that's some good stuff right there. I'm a believer, right? Um, plants are natural. They're living, they're evolving. So um, unlike an antibacterial drug, it's the same pretty much forever. A plant evolves with the environment and what's happening around it. So as bacteria evolves, as viruses evolves, the plants are evolving too, right? Um, so that's, that's cool. And doTERRA, um, I've, I've really come to respect them as a company and their integrity. They really do care about health 
and they put their money where their mouth is. Uh, they take action. They're not just words. They're opening up health clinics. They've already opened up health clinics in this country, and there's going to be more. They are coming to our area. Right. I don't know when, but it is in the plan. We're tier two. <laughs> Whenever tier two is going to happen for us. But they care about um, health care um, and natural health care, and they're going to be changing the standards of health, and I can really respect that.